next on the Gospel Bill Show. Hey, Gospel Bill. You look a little lonely. What's the matter? Did all the people go? They get tired of hearing about your Jesus. You know, I think it's time for you to leave or draw. Adventures in Dry Gulch, featuring the Sheriff Gospel Bill, his sidekick Nicodemus, the general store owner Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, banker and mayor T.U. Tudwater, and the entire Dry Gulch gang. What are you doing back here? Well, now, the last time I checked, Mr. Haynes, this was a free country, and a man could go just about anywhere he wanted to. Well, this may be a free country, but there's a lot of people in this town that don't like you here. Well, we come to change that. Nicodemus and I have something better to offer the people than what you and Bedlow are dealing out. Well, what are you going to give them, a clean shave? We're thinking more in terms of a clean heart. We can't have that gospel bill here comes into town preaching, he'll turn this place into another wimpy town like Dry Gulch. All right. You're the sheriff now. I pay you to take care of things like this. Your responsibility. So, you get out there and you stop him from preaching. Not in Silver City. Well, they rented the hall for three nights. What for? They want to have a gospel meeting. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They already paid me the, the $20. No, they didn't. I, I mean... Are you forgetting who I am? No, you're lightning new things. And I'm also the sheriff of this town, and the law says no gospel meetings in Silver City. Well, what am I going to tell him? I... I don't care what you tell them, but let me put it this way. If there is a gospel meeting here, this town is going to be looking for a new Opry Hall manager. Well, Gospel Bill, having a nice day, are we? Yeah, and I'd like to thank you for the job you did for us over at the Opera House, Haynes. Oh, I thought you'd appreciate that. Listen, I'm tired of talking with a puppet like you. You go get Bedlow because I want to talk to him face to face. What do you want, Claude Face? Did you come to Silver City to sample some of our whiskey? I'm here to preach. Well, don't let me stop you. I don't intend to, Bedlow. Just remember one thing. You're in my town now, Gospel Bill. That means you gotta play by my rules. And now, the conclusion to our story. I'm here to tell you about a gift that God has for you. He said, Jesus, Shut him up, Haynes! Shut him up! Shut him up! Why doesn't that Haynes do something about that preaching? Haynes. He's still out there preaching. Why don't you just plug him? There's too many people out there. I can't just shoot them all. Oh, all right. I gotta get rid of it, Haynes. If he keeps that up, it's gonna destroy everything we got going here. Now listen, we gotta have a game plan. Mm -hmm. There's a dynamite keg in the back storeroom. Now get a fuse, light it, and throw that thing out there in the middle of the street. That low, you're not thinking straight now. You throw a keg of dynamite out there, it'll blow up the whole place. No, Haynes, the keg's empty. It's not full. Now hurry up, man, get to it. I gotta stop that preaching. It's driving me nuts. Go to it, son. Count on me. Mm. Oh, oh, that preaching. If he keeps that up, I'll lose everything I've got. No more money, no more booze and silver city. It'd be just like dry gold. <laughs> Every one of us has an empty spot on the inside. There's a hunger in your heart for something that you don't have. Some people try to fill that with alcohol. Some people try to fill it with gambling. Some people fill it with wild and crazy things. But I want to tell you hey, something. Real. Not me, Nicodemus. God, the, the gospel bill. It, it, you can sing when I get done. But it should be the dynamite! Wait a minute. Nicodemus, this keg is empty. There's no gunpowder in here. Okay, Haynes, how'd it go out there? Worked like a charm. You've got to rely for crafty tricks, Bedlo. <laughs> yeah. Well, just think what would happen if I had two. I could probably run for president of the United States. <laughs> I just thought of something. If I know that gospel bill, he'll have that crowd gathered back in no time. Now's our chance to get out there and take care of him before the people come back. Yeah, you're gonna have to put the guns to him, Haynes. 
There's not a chance he can beat you in the draw, is there? Do chickens have lips? Good boy, Haynes, good boy. Now get out there and put it to him. Get rid of that sheriff once and for all. Do chickens have lips? Hmm. Hmm. I've never seen anybody fight the preaching of God's word any harder than Luther Bedlow. You know, that crazy maniac throws out an empty dynamite keg this time, but what concerns me is, next time, he's liable to throw out one that's full. Yeah, and wouldn't that be great? Here we are trying to preach the gospel, and a bunch of folks get blowed away. Hey, Gospel Bill. You look a little lonely. What's the matter? Did all the people go? They get tired of hearing about your Jesus. You know, I think it's time for you to leave. Or draw. Neither one this time, Haynes. You tell Mr. Bedlow that we're leaving town, but remember one thing. God's team never loses. You never did get that bad, did you, Hank? I can tell. I can tell. Come on, Haynes. Come on, Haynes. Oh, Haynes. Haynes! How'd it go? How'd it go? You okay, boy? He didn't shoot you, did he? I don't see any holes. Well, what happened? I'm proud to announce that through skill and cunning, Gospel Bill and Nicodemus are bye-bye, Haynes. You sure know how to make a one-eyed man feel good. <laughs> well, we got rid of that gospel bill, so it's time to celebrate. Hey, start that music up. Free drinks. No. Buy nine drinks, get one free. Feeling generous, Haynes. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that gospel bill out of town, there won't be any preaching in Silver City. This town will go on to become the most low-down, rotten town in the whole West. <laughs> Gospel Bill was still here. He started to tell me about, about you, God. He said I didn't have to be empty inside. And I'm tired of being empty inside. He said you're real. Are you? I need to know. But with Bedlow in town, he probably won't come back. That's what I'll do. I'll go to Dry Gulch. our meeting. We tried preaching in the street, and right during the middle of our service, he had his helpers throw a keg of dynamite out there, and everybody fled, and we come to find out there wasn't any powder in the keg, but things were getting so hot around there, we felt like we kept up the preaching that one of those people was going to get killed. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'll tell you what. You obeyed God, you went, and the Word of God's powerful, and it'll not return void. Well, you're absolutely right. We just have to take this one by faith. We can't see any results so far, but I know deep down inside something good is going to come from that meeting. I guess I probably got about a week of back work piled up over at the jail. I better get back over there and get two things. Nick Demas, come on in. I'll fix you a fresh glass of lemonade. Come on, you'll help me. That, that might help me down the road to recovery. explanation of your activities down in Silver City. 
What are you talking about, Mr. Tutwater? What I'm talking about is, as the chairman of the committee that funded your little missionary trip, I believe we have an explanation to us. You're right. You're after the money. We only spent 20% of the money that was raised by the congregation. Well, that's uh, good, but did you inflate that budget to begin with? No, sir. To be quite honest with you, we didn't even have the meetings. That's why it didn't cost so much. Oh, you didn't have the meeting. In other words, you probably took that little pleasure trip that I suspected all along. No, we didn't take a pleasure trip, Tutwater. We went there to hold the meetings, but we couldn't rent the opera hall. There are people in Silver City who don't care about us preaching the gospel. Then when it became too dangerous for us to preach in the streets, we decided it was best to come home. It did take a little expense money to pay for our horse's food and Nick's horse through a shoe. All that time and absolutely no results? That is ridiculous. Listen, Mr. Tutwater, I can't tell you how, but I know that there will be some results. It's impossible to preach God's word, the little what we did, without showing something. I plan to give full account of our trip to the congregation on Sunday morning. Well, I should hope so. Sheriff, that is absolutely the least you could do. <sighs> Thank you, ma'am. Excuse me, mister. Are uh, you talking to me? Yes, I need some directions. Well, for your information, I am neither a map nor a counseling center. I just want some directions. Listen, there are no saloons in Dry Gulch. You're going to have to satisfy your cravings for liquor someplace else. I don't want a drink. I'm just looking for the sheriff. Well, I'm surprised he's not looking for you. You're not a criminal, are you? No, I'm just looking for the sheriff. Uh, well, you'll find him about two blocks down on the right, if you can find anything at all. Well, thanks. The people they allow in this town. Sheriff, could I have a word with you? Well, sure. Come on in here and sit down. Hey, I've seen you before somewhere. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Silver City. Yeah, that's right. You were in the crowd up at Silver City. Well, now, for you to come all the way down to Dry Gulch, you must have something mighty important on your mind. Yeah, I do. You started talking about how a person didn't have to be empty. Well, that's right. We don't. But if we don't know what God did for us, I'm afraid we're all going to be empty. That's what I came to tell you. See, I wanted you to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And when you ask him to come into your heart, there won't be any emptiness there ever again. Well, now that you're a Christian, you need to read your Bible. Seeing as you don't have one, well, we'll just step in the store here and pick you up one. Reading your Bible is very important because it feeds your spirit. Well, I see that that lowlife finally made his way down to your office. Mr. Tutwater, this man is not a lowlife, but he does have new life because he trusted in Jesus as his Savior. Are you trying to tell me that he's a Christian? He hardly looks like one. Tutwater, the change that takes place in a man doesn't happen to his body. It happens down in his heart. Have you been listening to what the preacher has to say? Well, all I know is I still think you wasted a lot of time and money. Well, we didn't waste any money. This fellow's soul is worth more money in the whole world. That's what Jesus said, but that's not all. When he gets home, he's got a wife and some kids. I can guarantee you right now that they, too, are going to become Christians. Oh, Mr. Tutwater, I think we've got our money's worth. Well, maybe so, sure. Good day. Now, one thing you've got to understand right now not everybody who claims to be a Christian really is one. When you go back home, you'll have to run into some trouble, too. It's going to be tough up there in Silver City. That's why it's going to be real important for you to read your Bible and pray. You'll do all right. I've got a feeling God's going to use you up there. Well, that's all right, Sheriff, because I'm not afraid. I want to tell others what I know. Well, let's go in here and get that Bible. to drink. <laughs> well, Haynes, I'm proud of you, boy. You did a good job. You got rid of that sheriff and things are back to normal. Making money again. Mm. Selling lots of booze, Haynes. 
I had to order an extra shipment from the territorial capital. <laughs> Boy, I would like to have seen that sheriff's face when he had to leave town. <laughs> Mr. Benlow, it was a pretty sight. Yeah. Hey. What's that commotion out in the street? What is that? Ah, uh, don't worry. It's probably just another fight. No, no. Doesn't sound like a fight. Sounds too one-sided to me. Ames, get out there and check that out. Something's going on out there. I want to tell you about a man that's changed my life, and he can change your life, too. You remember me? I was drunk. I was in the gutter. But he lifted me up, and he changed my life. This man, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't you know it's against the law to preach in my town? These people need to hear the truth. I don't care what they want. They're in my town, and I'm telling you to get out of here. Do you want to hear the truth? Do you want to live the lie that Bedlow and Ames are telling you? Yeah. That's right. Jesus can change your life. Don't listen to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got big problems, Bedlow. Yeah, what's the matter, Haynes? It's more dangerous than before. Don't tell me that that gospel bill is back with more preachers. It's worse than that. They got one of our own people. What? One of our own? Yeah, you know that town drunk? Which one? The big one. He's all cleaned up and he's preaching about Jesus. Oh, no, Haynes. Oh, no, this is terrible. Do you know what this means? It's spreading. He'll tell his friends, and they'll tell their friends, and the next thing you know, this whole town will be full of Christians. They'll probably make a church out of one of my saloons. Oh, Haynes, we got to get out of this town before they throw us out. Oh, mm. now listen, I'm going to make the rounds to all the saloons, and I'm going to pick up the cash. I'll go with you. Oh, no, Haynes, we can't do that. Why, if you and me go together, it'll tip somebody off. I want my money. Now listen, I plan on giving you your money, Mr. Haynes. Tell you what, we'll meet uh, three miles out of town on the west side. Three miles out of town, the west side. That's right. Be there one hour. All right, all right. Three miles out of town. Three miles. Absent-minded me. Did I say three miles out of town on the west side? <laughs> what I meant was four miles out of town on the east side. Oh, Haynes. Oh, Haynes. Pity he didn't hear me. <laughs> Jesus Christ has changed me, and he has the power to change you, too. He wants to make you a new creature. He can do it. He has the power. He took authority over you. He went to the pit of hell, and he came out victorious.
Howdy, I'm Gospel Bill, and this is Dry Gulch USA. And I want to invite you to a week of camp this summer that you'll never forget. When you come to Dry Gulch USA, you can stay in a log cabin that looks just like an old west storefront. But there's a lot more to Dry Gulch USA than just eating and sleeping. Our camp has more than a mile and a quarter shoreline on beautiful Lake Hudson. And it's just a perfect place for a canoe ride. You can go fishing and swimming. But maybe you're the kind who would prefer to ride horses or ride in the county jail wagon. You might enjoy visiting Chief Nwanasin for an exciting campfire story or hunt animal targets on the Chief's trail. Then there's time for a shooting contest and hiking trails. Hey, there's plenty to do at Dry Gulch USA, but the most important reason for coming is so you can grow strong in the Lord. For more information on Camp Dry Gulch USA, call 918-234-5656. God so loved this world that He gave up His only begotten Son that anybody who believes in Him won't perish but will have eternal life. You know what? Even that old fellow that had a problem with drinking, no matter how rotten he was, Jesus still loved him and gave His life for him. And I want to tell you right now, Jesus loves you. And if you will just ask him to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, he'll hear your prayer right there where you're sitting right now. Why don't you just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe you were raised from the dead. If you'll pray that and mean it, and then say, Jesus, be my Lord. I give you my life. He'll hear your prayer. And you can know what it's like to have everlasting life. Coming up next, Bud's really off base at school, but will he make a home run or will he strike out on Father Knows Best? Then at 8.30 Eastern, Hazel's helpfulness gets her in deep water with her boss, but will she sink or swim? Watch Hazel here on the Family Channel. But if we don't know what God did for us, I'm afraid we're all going to be empty.